Today, live from Santa Anita Park in Arcadia, California, it's the 42nd running of the Charles H. Strub Stakes. This ESPN Sports presentation is brought to you by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By the Thoroughbred Racing Association, assuring the highest racing standards. Santa Anita is a TRA member track. And by Caesars Palace Las Vegas, relive the legend. And for the first time in 1989, Hello again, everyone. I'm Chris Lincoln as we welcome you to Budweiser Racing Across America in our fourth season here on ESPN of this, we're proud to say, Eclipse Award-winning series. Working with me, our expert on Thoroughbred Racing today, Dave Johnson. It seems like a very appropriate place to start our Race Across America, some of the top stakes races here at one of America's great racetracks, Santa Anita. And here today at the climax of exclusive four-year-old series, the Strube Stakes. It started in December, the seven furlong Malibu, then in mid-January to the San Fernando at a mile and an eighth, and now today a mile and a quarter. And this four-year-old triple has purses of more than $800,000. Something else unique about it, it's the final time the four-year-olds will run together. They go to the open handicap division. Let's give you a look at the conditions of racing today for the Strube. The 42nd running grade one, half a million dollars on the line. The four-year-olds go the classic American racing distance of a mile and a quarter. After a day of rain yesterday here in Southern California, we had a sloppy racetrack to start the day. It is now listed as muddy. The racetrack condition, a big part of our Story, our two to one morning line favorite Cherokee Colony has been scratched from the race. Let's take a look now at some of the great past history of this event as we call in our colleague, one of America's great racetrack announcers and a former voice here at Santa Anita, Dave Johnson. Well, Chris, when you take a look at the previous Strube winners, including such horses as Affirmed and Precisionist, Snow Chief and Ali Sheba, you realize that this is a classic event. Then you see who raced but didn't win. Horses like Damascus and Ferdinand and Gate Dancer and Broadbrush. Then you know this is a true showcase of the thoroughbred racehorse. Horses who have come to this series in many cases are star attractions with reputations made as three-year-olds. But in the case of Spectacular Bid, the Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner of 1979, his best effort came right here, not in the Triple Crown, but in the Strube at the foothill of the San Gabriel Mountains. It was a sensational race, even though only four horses started. Relaunch scooted away to a 10-length lead. Quick fractions, 22, 44, and 3. 108 and 2 for six furlongs. It was spectacular bid kicking in through the stretch. Flying Paster and Valdez making their runs. But it was spectacular bid like a bullet. Almost four lengths the best, stopping the teletimer in 157 and 4. The American dirt record for a mile and a quarter. And that will not be broken this afternoon. But we are in for a very competitive mile and a quarter, Chris, in Chapter 42 of this great race at Santa Anita, the great race place. And one footnote, recent history of this race. The last two years, the horse of the year have come out of this race. In 87, it was Ferdinand, who was second to Snow Chief, and last year, Ali Sheba took this through. I'm sure you can hear the bugler in the background. He has called the horses out to the racetrack. Soon you'll hear the post parade for the Struve Stakes. Let's take a look at our morning line as you hear the call to the post. We have scratched the one horse at scratch time. That was no can lose. Silver Circus at 8 to 1 in the revised line. Undercut the long at 15 to 1. Speed Radic at 5 to 1. Dynaformer 9 to 2. Perceive Arrogance 7 to 2. Nasser El Arab becomes the favorite at 5 to 2. Me Preferito 3 to 1. And Cherokee Colony, the 2 to 1 morning line favorite, has been scratched. And you heard the call to the post, the crowd responding to it. Big crowd turning out today here at Santa Anita. Well, we told you we scratched the one horse, no Ken Lewis. We'll start with this Gray Gelding Silver Circus. Here's a $32,000 claim that earned about $400,000. Julio Canani, a big tribute to that trainer. This horse came from 13th to win the Hollywood Derby on the turf by a head. He's been out of action since Christmas Eve. That's going to be tough. The question mark on the surface will be looking for the late run. Eddie Delahousse is in the Irons, rider, of course, of Prison Star, winner of the Preakness at Belmont last year. He won the 84th Strube with Desert Wine. The number three horse, and you'll note for the first time the Keeneland K. That means he's a Keeneland sale horse, $375,000 for the long shot undercut. And here's a horse who raced in England and Scotland as a two- and three-year-old, but he has not found fortune here in the USA at four. He's only run once on the dirt in 12 starts, badly beaten seventh at 40-1 to one in the San Fernando. He's not won since July of 87. Corey Black has the mount as he go to Speed Raddick. $23,000 Keeneland horse. Very consistent, close to the pace runner who has proven he can handle this type of racetrack and has had good efforts in major stakes events. Third, beaten the length in the Malibu. Second, beaten ahead in the San Fernando. 
He's got the best in the West on him, Gary Stevens. He was the leading rider at Santa Anita, Hollywood, and Del Mar in 88. You remember him from being on the Philly winning colors in the Derby. The number five horse, this is from the D. Wayne Lucas stable, Dynaformer. Had traffic problems in his West Coast debut last out at the San Fernando. This graded stakes winner from the East was a four-time winner last year and has a few good efforts on off tracks. And how about this? Angel Cadero comes all the way east, and look how he's treated here. Mud all over him here as he'll be the rider. The Hall of Famer will be on Dynaformer today. Another Keeneland sale horse. This is the number six horse, Perceive Arrogance. A $30,000 Keeneland bargain has earned over $200,000. On the board in the first two legs of the series, second in the Malibu, third behind me, Preferito and Speedratic in the San Fernando three weeks ago. The big question is the off track. He has never run on anything other than fast. Excellent workout three days ago, and he gets a jockey back he likes. He does indeed. One of the best. Lafitte Pinkai Jr., four-time winner of the Strube, has won over 7,000 races. This sport's all-time winningest rider in money earned. And the last jockey to win on him, perceived arrogance. Now we have Nasser Errol Arrow. And he is, you notice, no pony. Kind of the European style. He has a groom walking him to the track. Class act. He's beaten older stars in two of his three U.S. outings, a graded stakes winner in France, another of the many European stars who just happened to find their way to the Charlie Whittingham barn. Away since December the 24th. Before that, he won the Carlton Burke and the Oak Tree Invitation. A new rider for near. Remember, he was also a $20,000 Suffman, Nasser El Arab. Patrick Valenzuela has won the Stroop twice. 87 was Snow Chief and 83 Swing Till Dawn. Rounding out our field, number eight. This is the brown colt from the Las Barrera barn, Me Preferido. The speedball in this race, wire to wire winner of the San Fernando last out, beaten only a length in the Malibu. Lots of trouble before that. But on the negative side, Chris, he has not done well in the mud. He was up the track in the affirmed handicap behind Speedratic in November. Here's an omen, though. Me Preferido has been the favorite seven times, and all seven times he got beat. Well, he's on a winner today, uh, on, on, a, on his back. Chris McCarron, certainly a winner, as he won the Stroob last year with Ali Sheba, one in 85 on Precision. Precision's the last one to sweep the Stroob series. And, of course, scratch the nine horse, the early morning line favorite, Cherokee Colony. That's our field of seven going postward to the Stroob Stakes. When we come back, more about what happened to our favorite, Cherokee Colony. Yeah, update you on the odds. The one horse scratch, Silver Circus 7 to 1, undercut now up to 25, Speed Radic down to 3 to 1, Dynaformer at 5 to 1. Moving on on the odds board here with our field, perceive Eric at 7 to 2, Nasser El Arab is now the 2 to 1 favorite, Me Perfido at 6 to 1, and Scratch Cherokee Colony. The man who made that decision, the young trainer, Chris Beckert, what was involved in that decision to scratch the favorite? Well, Mr. Evans and I decided that it really wasn't worth taking the, the, the risk on this track. It's a little bit off, and the horse is a good horse. He's had a slight problem in the past. So we don't aggravate anything. I can come back and run in the San Antonio in seven days' time next Sunday. I don't think the track will be any worse. It might not be better, but it won't be any worse. And it's a mile and eighth, too, and that'll probably help him. It's three weeks, so it doesn't make much difference. Chris, thank you much. Sorry we didn't know you part of the show today. Thank you very much, indeed. All thank right. you. Bye-bye. As you take a look at the horses warming up on the back, Dave Johnson joining us now, and uh, Dave, as you see, me, Preferito, warming up, Chris McCarran in the irons there. We'll go back a bit to the second leg of this Stroob Series, January the 15th. It was the San Fernando Stakes at a mile and an eighth. And it was a fast track, and me, Preferito, carrying top weight, or carrying almost top weight of 123 pounds, got the lead early and then held off the late charge of Speed Dratic on the outside with Gary Stevens. But me, Preferito, with McCarran at 4 to 1 on the rail, holds on. Speed Dratic second, and back behind those two, Perceive Arrogance finishing third. On his connections, Laz Breyer, the trainer, and Chris McCarron, the jockey, we had a chance to talk with him earlier in the week. We asked him about this son of island world and about his tendency to like to get out front. Speed is very important for me, Preferito. Oh, yeah, he, he loved to be in the lead, and his father was the same way. And uh, when he's in the lead, he's getting very tough. And Marlon Van Quarter is easy to go to the lead because not too many people want to kill him himself chasing you. I, I don't know if I'm going to make a mile and a quarter, but I, I'm going to try my my heart on and that, that he go that far. The greatest thing about him is his gameness, though. He's really competitive. When a horse moves alongside of him, he just keeps digging, and which is why he's difficult to pull up after a race. So I don't think the extra furlong is going to hurt him any. When the handicappers came out here today and saw the racetrack conditions now muddy, they had to go to the form and were looking for mud marks to start, and the only one that has it in this race is Speed Radic. And Speed Radic got that mud mark over at Hollywood Park in November in the Affirmed. And in that race, he jumped to the lead, held it, and held off me, Preferito, who was 4-5 to five and finished 5th. So if you're looking for a horse for this kind of a racing surface, it has to be Speed Radic. Now, how do you figure Nasser El Arab? Nasser El Arab is going for the first time ever in his career off the grass. As you take a look at him, 
He has uh, been a turf specialist, has never run on the dirt, and what does he face now but mud, Dave? But a good horse should be able to race on anything. Nasser El Arab won the Oak Tree Invitational uh, and beating great communicator who came back and won the Breeders' Cup turf. So this is a good horse. Can he run on the dirt or can he run on the mud? We'll see. When we come back, we'll have our first Bud Long Shot of 1989 on Budweiser Racing Across America. Our first Budweiser long shot for 89 is Dinoformer, the richest horse in today's field and one of only two contestants who have won at a mile and a quarter. That happened in the Grade 2 Jersey Derby as Dinoformer enhanced his stretch running reputation by getting the lead from talented stable mate Czar Baby in deep stretch. After spending his sophomore year in trainer D. Wayne Lucas's Eastern operation, Dinoformer gained some local experience in the San Fernando Stakes. Lucas feels this son of Roberto will benefit from that race over the track, and jockey Angel Cordero Jr. must like his chances. He's flown all the way from New York for the mound. With these very strong connections, and with the anticipation of a dynamic price, we've formed our opinion for Dinoformer as today's Budweiser Lock Shop. The five-horse Dinafor opened, as you see at the top, nine to two. is now four to one, and there is Dinaformer. And who do you like up here, Dave? Well, first of all, let me tell you, I'm sorry to see Cherokee Colony scratch because I wanted to bet against him. I like Speedratic and would have played him even if Cherokee Colony was in the race. I think the horse gets a break in the weights. Gary Stevens aboard. He must love this racetrack. And the only horse I fear is Nasser El Arab. If Charlie Whittingham suggested putting up $10,000 or $20,000 supplement, a good horse can race on anything, I think that's the uh, the exacta for seven. I like that too, and I like Nasser El Arab the seven horse. Let's go to the top of the stands now. The voice of Santa Anita Park, the man who says he hasn't seen a racetrack this slow in a long time, Trevor Denman. Thank you, Chris. Last horse loading in the gate now is me, Preferito. Goes in. The flag is up. Still standing quietly, waiting to break. Still sent on their way in the Halfman and Dollar Scrooge Stakes. They all came away very perfectly. Undercut on the inside, going to the lead. Now here comes me, Preferido, on the grandstand side to join him. Speed Radic settles down in third. To see Arrogance keeping on the outside is racing fourth. Nasser Al Arab in behind him gives the leaders 12 length start. Silver Circus is second last and Dinah Former the trailer. Under the wire with one lap to go, and me, Preferito, going a good pace for this kind of track, is out there leading it by a length to the long shot undercut. Speed Radic in a good place, right there in third. Three lengths back to perceive arrogance. He's six off that leader. Another four back to Nasser Al Arab, down at the rail, Silver Circus and Dinah Former Trail. They've got three quarters of a mile left to go. Chris McCarran dictating the pace out there on me, Preferito, a length and a half leader to undercut. Speed Ratic is right there in third. Lafitte Pinkai now asking for Steve Arrogance to pick it up in fourth and for Steve Arrogance is closing in. He's only three off the leader and going well. For Steve Arrogance makes his move on the outside. Four back now to Nasser Al Arab. Dinah Former has nine lengths to make up in Silver Circus Trail. A half mile left to go in the Struve Stakes. Me, Preferito, by three parts of a length to Speed Ratic. On the outside of that, we have Perceive Arrogance now taking third. Undercut is right there in fourth. Nasser El Arab coming after them. Fifth is only four lengths off the lead. They come now to the quarter pole, and there goes Perceive Arrogance on the outside now to go for the lead. Nasser El Arab making a big run wide out, and now it comes down to these two. Perceive Arrogance and Nasser El Arab speed running third. An eighth of a mile to go, and Pat Valenzuela and Nasser El Arab get the lead in this through and it's nasa al arab taking to this muddy track like a duck to water he's loving it out there nasa al arab romping home under pat valenzuela to take the street stakes by an easy four lengths there's the victory salute from pat valenzuela perceive arrogance a big one in second a huge gap back then to speed radic dynaformer and silver circus who are involved in a three-way photo for third undercut showed speed but got tired and little me preferido i think he's just not the kind of horse to be suited to this type of racetrack he's the smallest in the field and this is
is a very, very hard racetrack to run on. He showed speed, but threw in the towel at the quarter pole, and me preferido finished last, but he's obviously a whole lot better horse than that. The time is a surprisingly good one for this track after that huge effort from Nasser Al Arab from the Charlie Whittingham barn. The winning time, a decent 2.02 and one fifth. Oh, Nasser Al Arab just went down on the backside, pitching Patrick Valenzuela. He looks like he's going to be okay. Boy, he just looked like he took a misstep, went down, pitched Patrick. They're both up. It looks like they'll be okay. But our winner unceremoniously goes to his knees and dumps his rider. We'll come back with more of our story of the Struve Stakes when we return to Santa Anita Park right after this. To uh, remount after Nassau Arab went to his knees after being pulled up on the backside. Looked like he just slipped and round in the mud. Uh, D. Wayne Lucas stopped by and said, Well, they've been doing that all day, losing their footing there. We're going to take a look now at this big performance by Nasser Al Arab. Let's go to Dave Johnson for an ISO look at the race. It's at this point, but let's take a look. In front is the number Then it was undercut finishing, or who was uh, fourth at this point, and the eventual winner on the outside. Now that on the outside fourth at this point is the seven horse Nasser El Arab, and undercut is now fifth. Let's watch it now uh, as the seven horse Nasser El Arab makes this big move on the outside. He won the Oak Tree Invitational coming from off the pace just like this. He shows that he can race on the off on the dirt track, on an off track, and with Pat Valenzuela urging him on, and number six, Perceive Arrogance holding on doggedly, it's still Nasser El Arab, a $20,000 supplement to this race, setting, uh, his, setting himself right up for the big cap a month from today. Nasser El Arab coming to the winner's circle, the son of the French sire El Nasser. Out of Coral Dance by Green Dancer, a Kentucky bred in the winner's circle. Sir El Arab has won the 42nd running of the Charles H. Struve Stakes, the half million dollar first, $275,000 for first place. But in one month of this time, the first double, so $1 million, the Santa Anita Handicap. To get more about that race and to hear about this uh, outstanding track facility of Santa Anita, here's Bob Struve with our TRA message. We're pleased that Racing Across America is showcasing the Strube Stakes from Santa Anita Park, one of the founding tracks of the TRA. Today's stake is named for my father, Dr. Charles H. Strube, a founder of Santa Anita. One of his lasting contributions to the success of this track is introducing the Santa Anita Handicap, the oldest continually run 100 grander. It will be renewed a month from today on Sunday, March the 5th. Since 1986, the Big Cap has been a million dollar race. Past winners include Roundtable, ACAC, Affirm, Spectacular Bid, and John Henry, who all won this race early in their Horse of the Year campaigns. Last year, Kentucky Derby winners Alasheba and Ferdinand battled in the wire. At the finish, Ferdinand was just a half a length behind Alasheba, whose Big Cap victory contributed to his election as the 1988 Horse of the Year. The Santa Anita Handicap has made its mark in American racing, and we look forward to writing another page in the sports history next month. And somebody who'll be in the big cap, I'm sure, is Pat Valenzuela, winning jockey. Was it worth getting dirty for? You bet, Dave. Uh, this is a very good horse. Charlie had him ready. Uh, he told me just to wait and make one big run, and the horse ran a very big race. You know, he handled the mud great, and uh, he just ran a super race. He's a very good horse. Let's watch his big move. This was the first time you'd ridden this horse. Yes, it was. Uh, he, ran, he was running so easy, and when I went by the leaders, I, I couldn't believe I made the lead that quick. You know, and he just accelerated when I got to hitting him, too. Now, during the stretch drive, this number six horse, Perceive Arrogance, is going to lose his bandages. We're going to see him. They look like banners flying. What could that do to a contest? Well, if it were to wrap around the, the horse's other leg, it could have tripped the horse and made him fall. Or if it got hooked around my horse's leg, it could have tripped him very easy. But fortunately, nothing happened. And uh, his horse ran a good race also. My, my horse is just the better horse of the two. And I think my horse is, is, is a, just one of the best horses in the country right now. He's, Charlie had him ready. And you're ready for the big cap. Oh, you bet. Could you be horse of the year with this one? Uh, you know, the last two years, they've come out of this race. Well, I sure hope so. I mean, he <laughs> sure ran like a, a horse of the year today and uh, okay. hopefully in the future. Chris, back to you. Thanks very much. All right, thank you, Dave. We're going to make it official now. Nasser El Arab wins it for Charlie Whittingham. His third victory in the Struve Stakes. His first since 1975. Charlie had had been second in photos three of the last five years. 
but he wins it today. Nasser Al Arab pays 644 in 320, the time 202 and 1 on a muddy racetrack for the mile and a quarter. Receive arrogance finishing second, you see there. Then it was the two horse Silver Circus finishing third. Speed Radic finishing fourth. Our Bud Longshot Di Dynaformer off the board today. Hope you enjoyed our coverage of the 1989 Stroop Six brought to you by Budweiser. Beach with age that clean, crisp taste. This buds for you by the Thoroughbred Racing Association, assuring the highest racing standards. Santa Anita is a TRA member track. And by Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. Relive the legend. Accommodations for Thoroughbred Sports and ESPN provided by the Beverly Garland Hotel and Business Center in North Hollywood. And you want to warm up? Well, stay tuned for college baseball on ESPN. It's the Sun Devils of Arizona State at Florida State against the Seminoles from Tallahassee coming up next. We start our 89 Racing Across America series with Nasser El Arab winning the Stroom Stakes. So long, everyone. From